So we spent a few minutes looking for articles on whether the tax cut you know, is a big deal or not to the middle class. Lance found a paragraph that says that depending on family structure, how many kids you have, whether you used to deduct or not, some middle class families might see $2,000 in tax benefits. Some might see a thousand, a single guy in the middle class might see 450 or so. Um, which if you read further into the article, you know, some people might be paying more in tax premiums. The whole thing is, I found, fairly inconclusive. Well, I don't, um, look, that's not the only article I found. I was able to find two articles, and that was only in four minutes of looking. So that say that people in the middle class, no, I found three articles that say... You only showed me one of them, but that's okay. I only showed you one because they're redundant. They all say the same thing. People in the middle class will get a tax cut, have gotten a tax cut. So I, I, and the tax cuts and the regulation reform is what is most, uh, most economists believe responsible for our, our, uh, our booming economy. Excuse me. So I, I, I don't know what the problem is, Rick. You know, just because Nancy Pelosi says that we didn't really have a tax cut, it's just, just rich people got a tax cut, doesn't mean you need to believe that. Um, anyway, I have nothing more to say about that. All right, that. so let's move on. You wanted to talk right. about the dossier yeah, again. Yeah, I, I read it again. I, I admit I didn't read it with the scholar, with the usual uh, Talmudic scholar level. I just skimmed through it. But the reason I read it again is because the dossier keeps coming back. Um, in this case, it came back again because Michael Cohn, uh, Trump's attorney, just... Uh, took a plea deal and as part of the plea deal he agreed to finger Trump or at least say that Trump got him to pay off these women uh, which I don't think is illegal uh, Rick says it is but to... but but it, it but that's not germane to my point um, Michael Avenatti, or I'm mean, sorry, uh, Michael Cohn, uh, also is all through the dossier. So the dossier says a number of things, but even though Michael Cohn, Cohen, Cohen, right, was willing to finger Trump. Uh, on this uh, uh, plea this deal. Plea, this plea deal he made, he would he he also said that what was said about him in the dossier wasn't true. And so what this means is when he now can say whatever he wants because it's all the deal's already been made. He reveals that that the dossier is not true about him. Now. This is important because the dossier has four elements to it. The first is that uh, Carter Page, is Carter Page, yep. uh, was a big go-between in Russia for, the, for Trump to make secret deals of collusion. Um, Carter, what's true about that is Carter Page did go to Russia as a representative on, I don't know, some sort, some trade things, just as an advisor or as an expert. He spoke in Russia about um, trade. He, d he gave a lecture. The second thing that the dossier says is that um, Trump had a variety of sexual activities that Putin can use to... Uh, Compromise. Yeah. Trump. Uh, the third part of the dossier is that Trump was offered trade deals in Moscow, real estate deals in Moscow, 
which even the dossier says he never took advantage of. He never did them. They just, the dossier said he was offered them. And the fourth part of the dossier said that all through this, uh, now it's not divided one through four. I'm just saying these are four of the main elements that I was able to glean. The fourth element was that Michael Cohen was the go-between for everything, and he denies everything. Now, there is no evidence that Michael Cohn did any of these things, the dossier said. There's no evidence that Trump participated in a variety of orgies and that Putin has compromise on him. There is no evidence that the Russians hacked the DNC because Wiki, Wiki, oh, that was also in the dossier. Um, because Wiki claims that it wasn't the Russians that gave them those emails. The, the, who, does the, who does Wiki say? He doesn't that? say. He's, but he says it wasn't the Russians. And the DNC has never uh, given up their computers to the FBI so that they could be analyzed. So to this day, nobody knows who hacked the DNC computers to release all those, all those embarrassing emails that that Clinton uh, wa that were released by Wiki before the camp before were they the, really that embarrassing, or was the leaking of them really the thing that? Well, they were embarrassing at the time, as I recall, because it made her seem craven and. And, and it, she said a lot of embarrassing things. I don't recall what they were precisely right this second, but everybody reading them was saying, wow, Clinton said this, Clinton said that. And the point is, nothing in the dossier now has been corroborated, including Michael Cohen. And the reason this is so important is because Obama, or I know that, that, that Rick will deny it with his, you know, but, but Brennan, head of the CIA, Comey, the head of the FBI, and, uh, were, and the Justice Department were all colluding to say that this dossier makes, means that Trump colluded with Russia. And now one of the main pillars has been pulled out from it because Michael Cohn's saying, hey, I didn't have anything to do with, with this. So now there's nothing that Rick can think of that's in the dossier that's been proven. And yet his whole case that, that Trump colluded with Russia is based on the dossier. Not the whole thing. Tell me what else. I don't know, but no, not the whole thing. Yeah, but, but you see, this is what we do. I, I, I've noticed it's a psychological pattern and it's been driving me crazy because every time we talk about why did Trump collude with, what, how do you know Trump colluded with Russia, Rick always says, and I've seen it in like six of our shows, Rick always says, well, because of things other than the dossier and that there were things in the dossier that are true. And it turns out, no. Nothing in the dossier has been, has been proven, proven to except be that Carter Page went to Russia. That's the only thing. And so, um, I mean, there are, there are conversations between Putin and his intelligence chief, you know, and they say Putin said this, and then, and then Yuri said this back to him, but that hasn't been proven either. So there's nothing. Real estate deals in Moscow, not proven. Trump going to orgies, not proven. Michael Cohn being the go-between, not proven. Uh, Russians uh, releasing the wiki papers, they may have, but it's not proven. It's been denied by, by, uh, by uh, the WikiLeaks guy, and it's denied by, and the DNC won't let him cha 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 uh, examine the computers. Julian Assange. Uh, Julian Assange denies it. So, so nobody is backing up Rick's idea that this dossier is like is filled with truth. And so Rick is left with no nothing, nothing that's been proven to show that Trump colluded with Russia. So why do you still think Trump colluded with Russia? Well And then you always say, 
you don't know for sure. Yeah, which is I, fine. I can say that again. Yeah, but, and but, I, I can say of those four pillars. Yes. You know, the least likely one is the orgies, in my mind. And I don't care because none of them have been proven. None of them. So your your argument that Trump deserved to have a spy put in his campaign, he deserved to be surveilled by the FBI, he should never have fired Comey because Comey was doing the right thing in surveilling him. All of those. Well, that's not why he says. Well, no, actually, it kind of is. He, okay. By the way, and also, the obstruction of justice charge against Trump, do you know what it's based on? Well, stuff he said on Air Force One. No. What it's based on is this. Trump is supposed to have fired Comey because Comey was investigating him, and it was supposed to stop the investigation. Do you know who ordered the Mueller investigation? Rosenstein. And do you know who advised Trump to fire Comey? Rosenstein. So Comey advised Trump to fire Comey. There's a letter. There's a document. We can find it on the internet. Fine. Where Rosenstein fine, fine, tells fine. Trump, you should fire Comey. And then that week, Rosenstein began the Mueller investigation. And Mueller is, a, is accusing Trump of obstruction of justice for firing Comey. Okay. So there's no reason for the investigation. There's no evidence that Trump colluded with Russia anywhere. And there's no well, reason you don't to believe... know that. Well, I don't know that you beat your wife. I don't know. Do you beat your wife? Maybe. But no, you one see... Sometimes I got pissed and I threw the, down a glass and the, I think I broke it. In the United States... No, it bounced off the carpet. In the United States, there has to be a reason for an investigation. And the reason given to the FISA court that's the Foreign Intelligence Sur I know, uh, I know, I know, I know. Agency the Court. The reason time given, we've gone over the this. reason given to the court was the dossier and some other stuff. Don't say. But not. you don't know what those things are, do you? But people say they exist. So. And you're basing your hopes on those things. L Rick, no, Rick, Rick. If the dossier has been has no corroboration, again, this week, one of the pillars was pulled out, then there was no reason for the investigation. There is no evidence for Trump colluding with Russia. All I do... There is no evidence that you can think of. Is there? All I do is wait for stuff to happen. So I know from being familiar with Trump... Trump's a sleazy guy. Undeniably, he is. Whether he cares for himself more than he cares for the country is, is, is inconclusive and, to some extent, immaterial. Um, and, you know, he has done some stuff that has helped the economy, though I would argue that Obama did some stuff that helped the economy, too. But all I can do is wait to see whether... Now, I'm a fan of the side opposite to Trump. And, of course, I'm cheering for, against Trump. You make me so mad, I'm going to pull your pants down. All right. Do you believe that there has been a smooth transition of power? Because that's like, a, like so vital to... The, well, there's no, the to public. me, I, I like to think that... In some things, I'm commonsensical, even though I'm not in other things. But to me, it seems like there is some credence to the idea that, that Trump hates Obama and is doing what he can to undo what Obama did um, to some extent because out of a, out of, for vengeance. I think you can make that case. Is it 100% open and shut that it's that? No. But in terms of a smooth transition of power, if you put in a guy into office who's trying to undo everything that the previous guy did, that seems like a not smooth transition of power. Also, when you put in, you know, 150 people have, have left uh, Trump's staffing positions in 
in the 19 months since Trump has become pro, which is an all-time record. Um, I'd say that that is evidence of a not smooth transition of power. But, um, but he was a duly elected president. I don't want to, I mean, this is, at this point, it's ancient history. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, let's go on to some other stuff. I, I, I think this next 10 days will, uh, there will be more stuff brought out um, from the Mueller and related investigations. Um, do you think Trump colluded with Russia? I still don't know. And I've, I've said it. What would it take to convince you that Trump didn't collude with Russia? Uh, something like six or seven or nine years to pass and for all the information to come out. Cause that's well, why do you think Trump colluded with Russia? What is the reason you think that? Because you think well, he's a we, sleazy guy? No, I think... Do you have any... Like, you may think that your next-door neighbor is a sleazy guy. Do you have evidence that he colluded with Russia? I think that... Uh, it's just a feeling, isn't it? No, I mean, but I think that all the, ev all the, the whole story yeah. won't come out for years and may not entirely come out ever. I mean, do we know who shot Kennedy 100% for sure? Do, do we know, do you have any reason whatsoever, any evidence, anything you can point to that shows that Trump colluded with Russia? It depends on how you define collusion, which isn't legally defined. Well, do, do I, here's what I think. Yeah. I think that many years ago, more than a decade ago, um, Trump has talked about running for president since 1988. He took, he temporary, he very brief, briefly ran for president in 1988, and then two more times since, I think 2012, and then maybe 2008, maybe 2000 or 2004. Irrelevant. Just get to the point. All right. So it would have been reasonable for Russia to focus on Trump as, you know, a long shot candidate for president. Do you have any evidence that they did that Trump work for, is colluding with Russia? As I said, it depends on how you define collusion. Do I think that Russia, that Putin, focused on Trump as a number of, as, um, as one of a group of people that they would like to keep an eye on in case they become politically... Do you have any politically... evidence that he colluded with Russia, Rick? You can ask the same question 500 fucking times. I'm going I'm to going... until you come up with evidence. Until you come up with anything. No, you know, I don't have to give you evidence. No, no, you ask my opinion. You ask my story. You're giving me a story. You ask my opinion. I'm explaining the basis of my opinion. I don't have to present evidence. This is not a fucking court of law. I can say my opinion. My opinion is Russia and Putin looked at Trump as one of hundreds of Americans who could, who in the fullness of time, might become politically useful. Okay. Well, so, uh, wait a minute, but you see, Rick, I can't base my vote on your feelings. But you're not, you hate when I interrupt. You're not even oh, letting oh, me finish. Okay. All right. Continue, so, please. So they interacted with Trump in a variety of ways, including probably offering him financial opportunities, deals. He's the art of the deal guy. So deals were offered, whether they were taken advantage of or not. Um, you know, maybe they tried to enmesh him with hookers. Maybe Trump got involved with them or not. I tend to doubt it. I mean, especially in his later years, Trump is 72 who, and he's not the most fit guy. I don't know that he's doing, you know, the, the banging he was doing of Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal um, happened more than 10 years ago. So I don't know, you know, I doubt that, I, I, I'd say odds are against Trump being enmeshed with sexual compromise by Russia. But Russia kept its eyes open and kept, tried to keep, you know, lines of communication open with Trump. Does this 
rise to the level of collusion? Does it even matter because collusion isn't an official legal term? I don't know. But I do know that in the fullness of time, over the next 10 years, we'll find out more stuff. And it, it's going to be up to history to conclude how bad Trump was, or not how bad. Is, was he a misunderstood saint? Was he the, the, the creepiest, sleaziest, dirtiest president in history? We don't know yet. It's going to take time. And it, it, it's almost immaterial because right now it's a partisan battle where each side, one side hates Trump and wants him out regardless. The other side loves Trump and wants him to stay regardless. So at this point, you know, I'm just a fan on the sidelines, hoping that incriminating shit turns up, but not knowing whether it will. Uh, and yeah, you can say, yeah, I, don't, I have no proof. I'm just like, I'm a cheerleader for uh, Trump's sleaziness to have manifested in a way that it presents evidence, which, as you say, I don't have much yet. And so, Lance, what evidence do you have that Hillary colluded with the Russians? Oh, do, oh, we, do I, we? I don't want to go into this whole fucking thing. I want to move on. But, no, uh, I have plenty of evidence. Uh, well, show, tell us. All right. She well, paid for the dossier. She paid the guy, the British guy, who paid the Russians for information. Well, there's more. She also accepted four hundred and fifty million dollars to the Clinton Foundation uh, after approving twenty percent of our uranium to be sold to the Russians. Okay, complete bullshit. She probably had nothing to do with the decision. No, she's the one that gave Eight the approval. Eight federal agencies or nine federal agencies had made it that decision. It doesn't matter. She was one of them. And it's not nine. It's not twenty percent. It of was nine federal agencies, and she did agree, and she gave twenty percent of our uranium reserves. One and a half percent of the uranium we use. It and matter. we got uranium no, 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 back no, no, from no. other parts of the world no, as part no, of the deal. No, we did, no, we did, no. we it fucking did. Look it, it up. Matter. Look it, it up. Matter. We got uranium matter. back from Russia. You no, even no, looked it up. We had this discussion. You looked it up. You, you admitted no, we, got, we got Russia. We got uranium from Russia. Rick, Rick, we you we this. got uranium. Russia, ru listen to me. Russia has three or, has about six times more uranium than we do. We can't afford to give any of it to the Russians. And after getting $450 million given to her, uh, given to her uh, charity, she gave 20% of ours to Hillary them. Hillary had nothing to do with the uranium she approved, deal. Except that she approved it. She had nothing to do with it. She approved it. And show further, me. Wait, oh, There's I'll show you more. I'll show you more, Rick. Not only did she have plenty to do with it, not only did she have plenty to do with it, but Bill Clinton actually arranged the deal to give Kazakhstan uh, the uranium to the Russians. And we got uranium back from the no, Russians. No, 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 no. We did. No, you it, admitted Rick, it like Rick, Rick, 30 Rick, episodes Rick, ago. The country that has the most uranium, four countries, okay, Australia, Kazakhstan, Canada, Russia, those are four uranium-rich countries. Bill Clinton arranged a uranium deal that sent Kazakhstan uranium to Russia after getting $450 million given to his foundation. Or no, not $450 million, 100, $145 million, and it was after making a deal to send Kazakhstan's uranium to Russia and send U.S. uranium to Russia. We his got... wife approved the deal. You don't know that, and there's no, no proof no, no. of that. No, no, no. His wife approved the deal. You don't, there's no proof of that. It the, was below her his wife, pay grade. No, no. His wife had to approve it. No. She, as Secretary of State, she had to sign off on it. There is proof. Show me that. I will. We're uh -huh. breaking. Really? All right. This 66. is 66.3. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. What happened was this. There is an organization called the Committee... For, on foreign investment in the United States, called the CFIUS. It's composed of the leaders of 14 U.S. government agencies involved in national security and commerce. Among them is the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. Without her approval, the deal could not be made.
Is this, is this in words? Sometimes? That is not in words, but she has to sign, the CEF IUS has to approve the deal. All right. So and she was in the CEF Yeah, but IUS. what I've read and She heard had a controlling uh, is ability. That this deal was so relatively inconsequential that there's a significant chance that she never personally approved it. Well, let me put it to you this way. According to this article, when this deal was going down, she actually went to Russia with her husband, Bill. Where's this article from? It's from Clinton Cash. Okay, so it's, it's Dinesh D'Souza, right? No, it's just a, it's another... No, Clinton Cash is this, is this crazily partisan... Uh, well, either she... Well, listen... It's I, Clinton Cash, Okay, Come on. okay, listen to me. This is in... Uh, I'm reading from the National Review, but there's no doubt that... During the time of this deal, she did go to Russia with her, with Bill, and Bill did get paid five hundred thousand dollars to what speak it to make a speech. Yes, so um, that is what happened. The deal did go through. She had to approve of it because this body has to approve the deals, and then they did get one hundred and forty-five million dollars uh, given to their. Uh, charity, which incidentally does not get any donations anymore, strangely enough, now that yeah, she's not in office. Well, because, no, they shut it down. And, cause and, it was... and, and Bill Clinton did go to Kazakhstan to arrange a deal for Frank Giustra, but who was also a contributor of millions of dollars to the Clinton family. All right, so a bunch of circumstantial stuff, but no, nothing, it's, it's that not, that, but, but you see, nothing that says that Hillary had to personally approve No, no, she had to, because this organization... But you can't find that in print but anyplace. Listen, Rick, she was on the committee, and the committee had to approve the deal. If she had said no, then that's not approval. I, I mean, my God, Rick, come on. Find me something that says that Hillary had anything personal to do with approving the deal. Find she, me, she's find on me, the committee that find, had to approve it. <clears throat> find me a sentence, because this is a big deal. You got, you've got gone on about it for, uh, during 10 episodes. You should be able to find one source that says that Hillary Clinton was personally aware of the deal and had to approve it. Because the sources I've seen say that she may not have even have been aware of the deal, except in the most casual way, and if that. But let's move on. You wanted to ask me some shit. That's right. I okay, to... well, turn, wait, turn this off because now I have to look up an no, exact because... sentence. Because he challenged me just then and I can do that. Okay, fine. Mm. 66.4. Okay, according to it in Telehub, uh, an article November 29th, 2017, there is a government document bearing Hillary Clinton's signature that proves the U.S.-Russian Federation uranium deal occurred. A 12-page protocol agreement between the governments of the United States and Russia concerning the management and disposition of plutonium bears former Secretary of State Hillary plutonium? Clinton... Plutonium? Yes. Plutonium? Bears former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's signature under Article 7, which can be found on page 5 of the agreement, it is clear that Rosatom is involved. Ar okay, Article 7 in the protocol agreement reads, uh, Ministry of the Russian Federation for Atomic Energy, State Corporation for Atomic Energy, Rosatom. Um, Article 7. This protocol shall be applied provisionally, the date of the signature. I don't think you want all this legalese, but no, it no, goes no, on no. to say, done at Washington, 13th of April, 2010, for the governments of the United States, the signature uh, of, okay, is Hillary Rodham Clinton. For the government of the Russian Federation, there is somebody else, but, Hers is the actual signature. It is not any of the other nine federal agencies. All right. The signature and the only signature on the document is Hillary Rodham Clinton's. Awesome.
No. There it is, right there. So tell let, me, me. let me just show it to the camera. Here is Hillary Rodham Clinton's. It doesn't have any other signatures for the United States, just Hillary Clinton's. All right? Okay, awesome. So we're talking about the Uranium One scandal. Yes. Supposed scandal. Are you going to say plutonium is not part of the deal? Is you, that going to be your argument, Rick? Well, tell me how, what, where we get plutonium. Where Rick? do we get plutonium, Land? Rick? Where the fuck do we get plutonium? Because <laughs> tell me about plutonium. Where does plutonium Are come? you going to say that because there's a difference between uranium and plutonium, well, there are two different that elements. Hillary is not responsible for the uranium deal? Where do we get plutonium from? Just tell me. Come on. You're on a plutonium's quiz. Plutonium's an element. Yeah. So I guess it comes out of the ground? No. Nope. Where does it come from? You make it. Yes. In reactors. Okay. So there's nothing in there about uranium. You take uranium. Well, do you think that the uranium deal might have involved some plutonium, Rick? No. Uranium so, so the deal she signed with Rosatom never took place. Well, no, that's a different deal. Oh, it's a different deal. Yeah, because plutonium... Oh, oh I'm sorry, Rick. I'm sorry. You're right. No, you're right. Because it said plutonium, all of this is just nonsense. It, it had nothing to do with the deal. You're right. You're right. She didn't sign off on it. it it's plutonium. Guys, we were wrong. It said plutonium, not uranium. Sorry, Rick. Go on, please. Explain it. Well, uranium uh -huh. is, a, is, an, is an element that's dug out of the ground. Yeah. It's a commodity. Okay. If, we want, if the U.S. needed more uranium, they could buy it on the open market. Relatively open. Subject to risk. So this thing I just read had nothing to do with the uranium deal, Rick. That's a, that's a, they're not it's connected. Something else. It, maybe they're connected, but it, it's an entirely if, different it, element. Okay, it's but, made in nuclear reactors. It's used in, for nuclear weapons. I don't know what other uses of plutonium. Oh, so of. let me get this straight. You're saying everything's okay because Hillary Clinton gave something they could use for nuclear weapons to Russia. Did so there's no, any, there, is, get, there is no problem. Did we get any plutonium back? I didn't read that part of the article. Oh, really? You just read one fucking paragraph? Because you it's, asked me for a signature, and I found you one, and I had to put it on the camera right there. Doc, on something that's an entirely different deal. No, it, it, this is the deal. It was, it was called the uranium deal as a colloquialism. But it really, apparently, really, had really, to do with plutonium. Can you find me anything that says that this is the... Turn the camera off. All right. 66.5 or 6 or some shit. Okay. Now I'm going to go way out on a limb here. But this is what I this is what I'm proposing. The protocol signed on April 13th, 2010 was the uranium deal. So when people talk about the uranium deal, this is what they're talking about. Now, in Article 7, Entry in fo into Force, which I read to Rick just now, I used the word plutonium because that's what they use. But that is the deal. Now, uh, Rick doesn't believe me. Well, because everybody's talking about uranium. 20% right, right. of the U.S. is uranium, according to you guys. Okay, okay. But what I'm saying is this. I maintain, and Rick can disagree, but the, the uranium deal many, many times that was, that was signed by Clinton, that deal took place in 2010, in, the, in, in, in between spring and summer of 2010. Now I managed to find this protocol, which was signed 
April 2010, and it refers to plutonium. Is so, there uranium at all in that document? Uh, I'm only looking at Article 7. That's the only article, it, because that's the part that has her signature. Okay. Now, where are the other articles? I don't, I can't find them now because it's almost two in the morning. Okay? So we, we probably need to research. No, no, we don't, because this is my final word on it. The deal, the uranium deal, took place in 2010. This protocol, with her signature, was signed April 2010. It refers to selling plutonium to the Russians. Now, it was signed by a representative of the Russian government and Hillary Clinton. Now, Rick, if you don't believe that that was the uranium deal, as commonly referred to, then it's up to you to prove that okay. that's not the I will say that deal. our director off camera said he, she found a citation that has the Uranium One deal closing in June of 2020. Well, it is possible when it says in this article that there were a series of agreements and that there were 12 protocols in this, different paragraphs that may have been signed during different months of 2010. And I'm going to say that this is the deal, Rick. I have, well, one objection is, if this is the deal, then why isn't Hannity screaming that Hillary sold our plutonium to Russia? Well, because the name of the company was Uranium One, so it may have come into common parlance as the uranium deal. Yeah, but... The uranium but the, one the, deal. The statistic that's always cited is, by you guys, uh -huh. is that 20% of our uranium was Let me ask you a question. Russia. Can you use plutonium to make nuclear weapons? That's one of its two uses. So should we be giving plutonium to the Russians? Then why aren't you guys yelling about plutonium? I am. God damn it! We shouldn't be giving plutonium to the fucking Russians! What the fuck was going on with Hillary? Was she crazy? So the U.S. and Russia each have roughly 1,700 nuclear weapons that are reasonably close to being able to be deployed. So it's, neither country has a shortage of nuclear weapons. And if the U.S. wanted more uranium so they could double their we could double our nuclear stockpile, we can buy it because uranium is traded with restrictions as a commodity. So, let's, I'll do some research, let's end this, let's take our last few minutes. You had a couple questions, Director. I have a question right now. Do you, do you know the number to emergency services? Because I had a stroke just then. <laughs> I know that let's because see your I can't move my left arm. Let's see your pupils. They're I the had, same size. I, I, had a, I had a stroke. No, well, his pupils are my the same My question size. is, Will, will anybody cry at my funeral? I will. Do we want to go on to another subject? Yeah, the subject is, the director has asked, what's up with Einstein and God? Because Einstein is our, you know, when we think of geniuses, if we don't think of Hawking, who may have also talked about God, we, we think of Einstein, who, and there are several quotes, you know, um, the most famous one being, God does not play dice with the universe. And another one was along the lines of, um, you know, if somebody asked Einstein if his theory of general relativity was true, and Einstein said, you know, if it's not, then I feel sorry for God. And people, interpreters of Einstein, tend to think that he wasn't talking about a, you know, a, a white bearded man in a robe on a cloud. But what he meant by God was a sense of universal beauty and symmetry. And symmetry, for those of you who don't know, is the idea that physicists want laws that are as universal as possible. It's a crappy law that says that things are one way in one part of the universe and another three ways in three other parts of the universe. A symmetrical law applies equally across the entire universe. It's more simple, it's more beautiful in the minds of physicists. 
who eventually want to boil everything down into one simple, unavoidable set of rules, often called the unified theory, that accounts for everything in a logically satisfying way. Okay, thing two. Uh, people, I guess, want me to talk about IQ. And you have to start any discussion with IQ, or at least I do, with the Winston Churchill quote about democracy, that it's the worst political system possible, except for every other system. Um, IQ is a really hinky measure of human intelligence, but it has the longest history and in many ways is, the, is one of the least hinky you know, forms of, of, of evaluating human intelligence. Though I would argue that a more effective measure of human intelligence is, fuck it, who cares? Why are we in a competition of, of uh, to, I mean, be, uh, beyond the basic use of IQ, which originated as a way to get academic help for students based on their ability levels. Dumber students get a certain kind of help. Average students get your, your average classroom experience. Smarter students get enrichment. And that's what Benet, a French guy, uh, came up with the idea of intelligence testing for. Then Terman, a Stanford dude, said, ooh, let's make it fancy, put it on a 100-point plus or minus scale, um, probably help come up with the, uh, the ratio idea that your IQ is your mental age divided by your chronological age times 100, made it all kind of, you know, made it a, you know, a, a two or a three-digit thing. Um, and then 60, 70 years after Terman, some talented amateurs, Ron Hoflin, um, Kevin Langdon, others, um, Paul Coymans, Jason Betts, a bunch of people decided to turn it into kind of a sport. Like, let's see if we can, because most IQ tests only measure from about 50 to 150. Because, you know, if you're scoring in the 50s or 60s on an IQ test, you're fucked in one way. You're, you're, you're not smart. If you're scoring in the 140s or 150s on an IQ test, you're fucked in another way. You're too smart. Um, they wanted to see, hey, can we measure beyond 150 and find, you know, the, the world's smartest person, you know, the way that, you know, they're, they're the world's strongest man, woman, you know, has people lift three, three foot rocks to, and, and, and <laughs> 10 foot tires and, and tow trucks. Um, with their, you know, headgear to find the world's strongest person. So it was kind of turned into a sport. Is it legit? It's, it's probably at least as legit as the world's strongest man competition. You're going to find some smart motherfuckers. Where do you fall in that category? I've taken 30 or 40 of the world's hardest IQ tests and on 20 of them. Um, I've gotten the highest score ever achieved. So I'd say that puts me at number one, but according to a, a popular list, um, I come in at number two, which is fine, because number two is funnier than number one. Um, is it, I mean, there, there, one problem with this kind of thing is that there are plenty of super smart people, like uh, frickin' Bill Gates, who has better things to do, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, better things to do than spend 150 hours taking an IQ test. You know, in 150 hours, Bill Gates might be able to, to route $100 million to eradicate malaria in Africa. Or he might be able to come up with something to increase the market value of Microsoft by $70 million. He's not going to take an IQ test. Um, so, you, a high-end IQ test misses a lot of people who have better things to do. The same way the world's strongest 
man competition, uh, you know, misses lots of people who, you know, the, the 362 pound, you know, the NFL lineman who is not going to risk blowing out his knee when he can make, you know, 2.2 million playing for the Raiders. I don't know. Do they have that kind of money to pay a lineman? I don't know. But he's not going to enter the world's strongest man and to try to win 50 or 100 grand when he's getting. Two million a year to play football. Quick question: So, Donald Trump becomes president of the United States. Doesn't that make him like pretty much a couple of standard deviations above the mean in terms of intelligence? Well, he's as far as we know, we don't know what his SAT scores were. You can convert SAT scores to IQ scores. Talk, say who we're talking about? Say. Donald Trump. We don't know what Donald Trump's level, actual level of intelligence is, and he's very paradoxical because he does some things that seem canny or clever, and then he, he misspells three-letter words. Um, he seems, he's, people who know him and people who don't know him uh, describe him as not a reader, kind of very uncurious. Um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a mystery, the guy. But, you know, if I had to estimate his IQ, um, I think I'd put it, at least at one point in the 120s, and maybe now still in the 120s, maybe in the 110s, but I don't know, you're not going to get him to sit down and take an IQ test. I got to challenge him, some tabloid show, Inside Edition, let me challenge him to, uh, on an IQ test, and if he, if he took one and I took one, and if he scored within 40 points of me, I would cut off one of my toes. And then the, the, the hostess said, yikes, at how creepy I see. Would, would that be with, uh, with something to put your toe to sleep or just raw? Either way. I, 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 I'll, I'll issue the challenge again. President Trump, take an IQ test. The one that can measure up to, you know, beyond 150. Let's, I'll be a little conservative. If you score within 30 points of me, I will um, cut off my little pinky toe. And yeah, maybe I'll use anesthetic. Come on, you know, I'm not an animal. All right, what else, Lance? Uh, Molly Tippett. Oh, okay. Was a woman killed by an illegal alien to this week, and it's Rick's fault because we let in illegal aliens. We have 11 point something seven or so million illegal aliens. One of them, a true murderous asshole, killed this innocent. Young woman, um, thirty seconds, and somehow, if you know, if we hadn't let in eleven million immigrants, even illegal immigrants, even though we're a nation of immigrants um, that didn't even have the concept of illegal immigrants until the twentieth century, um, somehow, if we turned away those eleven point seven um, million, this young woman would still be alive. Yeah, she'd be alive if we had. Uh, actually, Rick uh, last week said that he didn't want ice anymore. We don't even Wait. we don't even get to have ice anymore, which is the government agency charged with. Uh, Wait, did I say that? Yeah, you did. You came out against ice because Cortez is against ice, and Bernie Sanders is against ice. I don't know. I don't think I said it in the, that.